Hello there, this is Welch, ASMR 82. Hey, how you doing? So, this is the third video in the Football Manager 2023 Let's Play series. It's an ASMR series, so that's why I'm talking really calmly. It's meant to help you relax. I know some of you have been really getting into this. In today's video, um, I haven't got many updates in terms of the games that I've played per se, but because of course this is 2022, the World Cup just happened, so we're going to take a little look at how this game simmed the World Cup, um, as well as an update on how we're doing. I am still top, would you believe it? Let's dive straight into this, so I hope you enjoy the video, click like, subscribe, blah blah blah. So, Roma is me, and I'm top, my form is fantastic. I've beaten everyone. My last five games were 1-0 to Bologna, 3-0 uh, to Samp, 1-0 Cremonese, 2-0 Sassuolo, and 2-1 Torino. So not many big games there, but I've already had quite a few big games. Anyway, so I'm scoring goals. I'm not conceding many. I've only lost one, and that was to Lazio in the second game of the season before I completely changed my tactics, you remember. And I've drawn two, Monza and Napoli. Monza was the first game with the bad tactics. And Napoli, well, Napoli's Napoli, but they are second in the table here. Also with a fantastic run of form. Down the bottom, Cremonese, Spezia and Juventus, who have had those points deducted from them. Which in real life have been given back, so I don't think the game is going to do that. So they were bottom for some time because they were on like minus 15. Um, yeah, so let's look at the squad and the tactics. Let's do that. So tactic wise, I've stuck to the 4 3 3, and we've got a good relationship here. Cristante, I've been rotating the middle three a little bit around. Cristante had been playing in the um, box to box playing position but he's just as good in the defensive position. Pellegrini is my Metzala, he's got to be more attacking. But actually Bove has worked his way into the team. Um, so yeah, um, he's a youngster from Rome and I think he's from Rome anyway. Yeah, he's Roman. Yeah, so he's only, how old? 20. And um, yeah, he's got good stats. I mean, he can play in the defensive position, but in the central midfield, he born ball winning and then box to box is two and a half. So, you know, he does a good job there. He's got lots of energy and I'm changing them around with, I'm bringing in Kamara every now and again. I'm bringing in, who else? Matic. And I haven't, well, Van Alden, uh, just like in real life. Uh, he had, so he hasn't played for us yet. Although we did manage to go to the World Cup. But we'll talk about the World Cup in a second. And I'm trying to use the youngsters a bit more. So the game has simmed on a little bit now. Um, but yeah, Zeki Celik in this game is fantastic as a wing as a yeah, wing back on support. He can play either side. I'm having to play Llorente who is normally a centre-back in this position. He does have okay pace. Yeah, pace is 15, acceleration 12. He's obviously much better as a centre-back. He can play left-back. He's not really a wing-back, and if he, if he is, he's not great at support. But I didn't have much of a choice because um, Karsdorp was injured, and I think Spinazzola has been injured as well. So I, I really did, I ran out of options, basically. So it's coming up to transfer times, the 21st of December. So in a week's time, I can get some players in. I've had a little look. They've increased my transfer budget because I'm top of the league. Let's have a look at finances. So the board gave me um, extra money, like maybe 9 million extra, which I wasn't expecting. So I have been scouting. Uh, wing backs because basically that's the position I'm weakest in, but I'm not really getting anywhere. Um, 
that's my short list. Yeah, um, Nathan Ferguson, but he's got injured, so I can't buy him. Um, I was thinking maybe about a Welshman, Reese Norton Davis. Everyone I've tried so far, the club has said they don't want to sell during the January transfer window. Ruggeri, Hartman, um, Ayn Munoz, Tsanoli is on loan, so I can't get him this year. Um, Melvin Bard is too expensive. Venice is a good player. Uh, who else? Arteaga of Henk might be the best choice, the Mexican. But and actually, I don't think I can because he's a non EU. Yeah, he doesn't qualify for the Netherlands, so I can't get him because I, I can't get any more non EU this season. In case you don't know how it works in Italy, you can only sign two non EU citizens per year. So it's not you it's not I've got more than two on the team, but you can only sign two per year. And if you sell one of them, it doesn't matter. You can't sign a third. So it's a bit weird. Um who else? Antonino Gallo from Lecce. Uh, but yeah, I just I'm really struggling to find a wing back that I really really want to get. Um, he looks good, Andrea Pellamatti. I can't think. I might, but he's a youngster. He's not ready. I need to, someone who's gonna be able to take over when we've got two games a week in Europe and stuff. Well, okay. So let's have a quick look at competitions and then we're gonna look. So I'm top, as I said. I finished top of the group in the Europa League, got all that extra money. And I haven't played in the uh, Coppa Italia yet, but I've got a game as against Salernitana at home. Um, in terms of goals for the Serie A, I think I might be leading the way. Oh yeah, here we go. Play stats, goals. Oh, she rose top, actually. Lukaku and then Tammy. 12, 10 and 9. Average rating, Zapata is top, Pashalic is second, and Tami is third. Assists, Pellegrini, six. Delefeu uh, for Udinese, and five, and Bonaventura from Fiorentina, and four. And then clean sheets, Musso of Atalanta, first with eight. Sirigo, Fiorentina, with eight, and my goalkeeper, Patricio, with seven. Players of the match, you've got Tami with four, Pashalic with four, from Atalanta and Orsolini three, and then he's mine as well. He actually scored the winner against his old team for me the other week. Okay, World Cup. Let's do this. Um, how do I get to World Cup? World. World Cup. Yeah, Brazil won it against England in the final. And it's really funny because I did a prediction video a little while back where I said England would lose the final to Argentina in my first video. And then closer to the tournament, I did a second video and I said Brazil would win it. Um, but this time I said they would win it against some Portugal, I said. So let's have a little look then. Um, so in the groups... That finished exactly the same as it did in real life. Netherlands top, Senegal second, Extra third, but Qatar did manage to get some points. Um, this one was a bit different, so England top, USA second, which is like real life, but Wales beat Iran, but they lost to the USA and got hammered by England, absolutely hammered. Um, what was the score? If I go to stages or groups, group B, 4-0, so USA beat Wales 3-0, then 5-0 to England, Rashford hat-trick, but then Wales beat Iran 1-0, but they were playing a weird formation and they weren't playing Bale and yeah, it was a bit strange to be honest. Anyway, only Monterey. Uh, then Argentina finished top, Poland second, Mexico third, just like in real life. France, but Denmark did make it through in this version. Australia actually finished bottom with no points. 
unlike real life, Germany also got through in top, which meant Japan didn't. Croatia and Morocco did get through, but in the different order. So Morocco came second, and Canada didn't score any points. 10 0 in terms of goals scored and against, which is a bit harsh. Brazil finished first, but Cameroon finished second rather than Switzerland in this particular version. And then Portugal finished top, but Ghana finished second, which meant that not only did South Korea go out, but Uruguay finished bottom. But similar to real life, it was extremely close between all three teams. Okay, so then second round. I, this, you know, could have happened. I was a little bit shocked that the Netherlands in real life beat the USA so easily, but in this version, they actually lost two goals to one. And let's have a look who scored. It was Wea, Wea and uh, Reina and Cope Mainers of Atalanta was the scorer for the Netherlands. In fact, hold on to your hats, USA, because he did really well in this tournament. Argentina beat Denmark two goals to one in extra time. Goals from Di Maria, then Wynn and Alvarez scored the winner in the 99th minute. England beat Senegal 1-0, so much less than in real life, and that came from White, bizarrely. Uh, Poland lost 3-1 to France, pretty standard. Germany beat Morocco 3-1. Brazil beat Ghana 3-0. Croatia lost to Spain 2 goals to 1, and Portugal beat Cameroon 4-0. I think there were a couple goals by yeah, two goals from Ronaldo. Okay, so that was the f second round. Quarterfinals, USA beat <laughs> beat Argentina. Three goals to two. I saw this happening and I thought, I can't wait to do my next video. So yeah, um, Aronson, Sargent and Sargent again. Cancelling out Balerdi and Di Maria. But Messi got injured and taken off. Which probably had something to do. But, you know, all the same. Uh, England beat France 1-0, so unlike real life, they managed to get through that match. And Rashford was the goal scorer. Saka set him up. France didn't manage to get a single shot on target. And Spain beat Portugal with a goal from Sergio Ramos, who didn't even go to the World Cup. Okay, semi-final. USA only lost to Brazil 1-0. USA subscribers are like jumping out of their seats right now. I'm not getting relaxed by this at all. Gabriel on the 59th minute assist by Neymar. There was a, a goal ruled off by VAR, I think, for Vinny Jr. But still, 16 shots to 17, 3 on target to 8. Expected goals from the USA 2.1 compared to Brazil's 1.38. Some good goalkeeping then. What did he get? Edison 7.3. Let's go USA. Cannon, Bello. Don't even know who Bello is. Harrison, Aronson, Pulisic, Sargent, McKenney, Bradley. Bradley? So those are the semi finals. Third place playoff. Spain beat the USA 2 0. Sorry, USA. Goals from Sergio Ramos penalty and Alvaro Morata. And then the World Cup final we just saw a second ago. England only lost to Brazil, three goals to two. Kane opened the scoring in the sixth minute. Scored again. So they were 2 0 up. Oh dear. Marquinho. What? So the two goals up and Brazil get a man sent off. So against ten men, you're telling me they conceded three goals. Bobby Firmino, Gabi Jesus and Martinelli on the 85th. So two goals in the last eight minutes of the match. And they win the World Cup. Yeah, that's kind of realistic. <laughs> no, that's crazy. That's really crazy. 
So yeah, that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video and the little catch up. I've got football resuming soon. I've got three friendlies booked. Vida Raymond, a little team near me, or two little teams near me, and then I've got Inter away. So we'll see how that goes. But thank you so much for, um, you know, liking the videos and commenting. I'm uh, getting ever closer to doing a Tottenham rebuild. <laughs> God. But anyway, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And subscribe if you're new to the channel. Give me a like and a comment. Okay, see you next time. Catch up next week.